So here is a microphone I got at Goodwill for a couple of bucks and it's made by Logitech. Its model number is A-0060A. It also has Konami written on it. I don't know if that's a subdivision or whether that's a certain type of microphone that they sell. Anyway, what I wanted to do with this is have the microphone I'm wearing around my neck interface with this USB sound card because presently the sound card I'm using on my computer has limited function it has static in the background you can probably hear that right now so I want to remove that static by using this instead so I'm gonna open it up and see if I can do that so I couldn't get this part open so I'm gonna open this part up And these are not screws. These are just plastic imitations of screws. Don't know why they did that. Anyway. Okay. So here's where the microphone comes in. And then this is the USB out to the computer. Awesome. So first thing I want to do is remove the headphone. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've removed the microphone. And now I want to determine what kind of microphone this is. I have a feeling it's one of the active types or whatever you want to call it. It generates its own voltage. So I'm going to hook it onto my oscilloscope and we can see if it generates a voltage. So as I speak, you can see my voice is creating its own voltage because it's the type of microphone, which is the inverse of a speaker, as it were. So a membrane a coil and a permanent magnet and it generates its own voltage. All right, so I have the USB sound card hooked into this laptop here. So it is powered and I want to measure the voltage where the old microphone used to be. So if I do this, the DC voltage is 1.64 and just for fun there is no AC voltage as I suspected so now I need to measure the voltage that would typically go to a computer microphone and the easiest way to do that is to use the microphone that I'm wearing around my neck so no audio for this part Okay, so you can see that the voltage was 2.87. So about 1.2 volts higher than this voltage output. So I'm going to be okay if I just hook a computer microphone straight into this guy. So I'm going to do that. Now it may not sound good, but I'm not going to damage anything. Alright, so I determined that the voltage output of this is around 1.6 volts which is lower than the standard microphone voltage but something else I want to check is the resistance of the two microphones so here's the original microphone and its resistance is around 620 ohms of resistance and if we measure the resistance of the normal computer microphone That comes out being 2,800 ohms. So this has a much higher resistance, so you aren't going to damage anything in the circuit by attaching it. So that's something else you would want to check. Okay, so that's all nicely soldered up. So now I'm going to test it on the computer. You 
using this thing here. It's kind of a rinky-dink microphone, but it should work fine. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. All right, now let's try playback. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Awesome, so it works. It's a little loud, so I'm gonna adjust the gain. But other than that, it's great. And in case you were wondering, here's the circuit board up close. So here's the positive of the microphone, and this is the ground of the microphone. This is actually a ground plane. Anyway, so this capacitor is tied to the positive, and then it goes back to this resistor here, R13, and that is a... 3k ohm resistor and that attaches to this pin here on this IC which I'll look up in a bit if I can and then there's another pin here which gets attached to C13 so this capacitor here and that attaches to this side of the resistor. So I'll just draw a quick schematic of that. So here's the schematic. Here are the two pins off of the IC. One of them goes through C13 and the other one goes through R13. So I'm guessing this is a voltage and this is a sensor. Uh, so this goes out here and you can think of this as a voltage divider as it were so as you speak into a microphone the resistance in the microphone changes so the voltage here will change between these two resistors so that change in voltage is your sound wave and that's picked up here on the pin of the IC so there you go and this is just here to uh, filter a bit or stabilize the waveform. Awesome. Okay, so it turns out I was wrong about this being a voltage. This is a sensor or an analog input. And this IC is an audio codec, so it's a WM9708 CDS and this is what they call mic one which is an analog input with the ability to have additional gain and this is the CDR Oops. these are both analog inputs so I'm not really sure where this voltage is coming from so yeah I'm curious to see if there is a voltage on it at all so I'm going to do some voltage measurements and get back to you. Okay, so I did some uh, voltage measurements and I also used my oscilloscope to measure various points throughout this circuit. So, when I spoke into the microphone, I saw a signal here. It wasn't very high in amplitude, but there was a change in voltage, so I could see my speech patterns there. Anyway, so this does act as a voltage, 1.6 volts. This also is at 1.6 volts DC, but that's not a big issue because this is biased at that voltage, so it's meant to be there. Anyway, and this point here is at 1 volt because of the voltage division of R13 in the microphone. So when there's a change in voltage at this point here, because the microphone is vibrating that AC waveform gets through this capacitor or vice versa so there's a change in voltage that is able to get through C13 and appear here hopefully all that made sense 
and it's really cool that it works. It may, you know, wear out the IC a little faster than it should, but so far everything looks like it's working well. Oh, and if you wanted to do this uh, more professionally or more as per standards, whatnot, you would have uh, real voltage. So you might take this, disconnect it from that point there, and go to your VCC source. So that's like positive 5 volts. And you would probably have to change the value of this resistor. But since it works and I don't want to break it while I'm trying to fix it or improve it, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Okay, so here we are. I've modified the microphone's input, so the sound should be hopefully better. And if it's not better, I'll switch back to the original. But it was fun to work on. Thanks for watching.